Hi there, it's Katie from katiekmay.com. I am here today, tonight, just to check in with you all. There are a lot of new people in the group, like so many that I haven't even welcomed yet because I tend to do that in um, little chunks because it, it makes it more manageable and so that you're not seeing post after post after post of me welcoming one person at a time. So I wanna welcome everybody new and old who's in the group and for those of you who don't know me, my name is Katie. May. I am the group guru. I run five groups, soon to be six, in my practice, and they bring in the bulk of my income. Um, they are the foundation of my practice, and I have a small caseload of individual clients on top of that. So I love my groups. I love to talk about my groups. I can um, decide I want to run a group on a Monday and have it filled by the end of the week. I have it down to a science and I think that it's part my energy around it, part my love of it, you know, and part the tools that I have in marketing it. So what I wanted to do was share with you a couple of group activities that I did this week and also to remind you that I have one space left in Become a Group Guru and it starts in a few weeks but cart closes for good tomorrow. Today is Thursday. Closes for good tomorrow, Friday at 3 p.m. I see someone's on. Say hi so I know who's here. Um, so I was just sharing that I'm about to share some of my groups and that cart closes for Become a Group Guru tomorrow at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and there's only one space left. So congratulations to all of you who are in the course and I'm assuming that one more will be signing on in the next day. Um, the buzz around it and the excitement has been amazing so far, so I can only bet that at least one more person is gonna wanna join on because I'm not opening cart again until next year, so I only open cart once a year. Um, so, two activities that I have to share with you tonight. The first one, okay, so I had a parent reach out to me an email and she said that her daughter was really struggling, her daughter is a part of one of my groups, and she said, but, you know, my teen told me that the only coping skill that she's learned in group was watching The Office. So I was laughing about that. I said, my toolbox of coping skills certainly doesn't end at just watching The Office or encouraging people to watch The Office. So to, in order to combat that and to give, you know, her daughter more skills and also give her a more concrete idea that I am sharing these skills within group, I had them play coping skills bingo. So I'm gonna tell you what that's all about. So I have this bingo board. You can print one from the internet. I basically just Googled bing, printable bingo board and one came up. And so what I do is I have them list tons and tons of coping skills. And as we're doing that, I'm talking about how coping skills are planned and temporary and they're a way to distract yourself or give yourself some relief from overwhelming emotions, but they're certainly not a way to avoid them altogether. And part of coping is being able to come back to the situation and handle it effectively. Hi, Brianna. I'm so glad you're here. So... What I do on my whiteboard is I have them list, I ask them to each list five to make it manageable and we go around the room and they say like listening to music, going for a run and they go around and around and I say we have to have at least 25, um, there's 25 spaces but since I have eight people in my groups we generally come up with even more. So then what I have them do is they take this bingo board and they fill out one coping skill in each of them and once it's all filled up, hi Elizabeth, I'm glad you're here. So once the bingo board is all filled up, then I start calling out like listening to music and someone will check that off or I'll call out, um, you know, watching a funny YouTube clip and then someone will check that off. So depending on how long I have in the group, I did five in a row for my last group instead of doing the whole board because we didn't have that long. And the purpose of it is to get them thinking about that there are lots of different ways to cope with a stress stressful situation. And actually, when I asked for top takeaways in this group, that was what one of them said, is that I learned that there are a lot more ways to cope with stressful situations than I thought that there were. And it was great. And then their homework was to take their bingo board and go home and practice one of these skills each day. So on top of them having way more skills than they thought that they had in order to handle a situation, they also have concrete evidence, parents, that were learning all of these skills within the group. Your enthusiasm is always so lovely. Keep rocking. Oh, yay. Thank you, Elizabeth. That's so nice to hear. Um, oh, and one of the things that I thought was so funny, hold on, I have a, another one here. I bought another one. So for a while, I was incentivizing my teens by getting like $5 gift cards to Wawa. If you're in this area, you know what that is. It's like um, hoagies and stuff like that, subs if you're in a different area. I don't know. Um, 
So, or like Starbucks gift cards for $5. And it got to the point where they would say, I have so many gift cards, I don't know what to do because they were getting them week after week. So it stopped being an incentive. And it was funny that then I saw, I was in the checkout line of the food store the other day and I'm like, what am I gonna get as the pr prize for her, for playing bingo in group? And I got these, these <laughs> limited edition Halloween Pop-Tarts. You would have thought I had a $100 bill. They went crazy over them. So everybody really wanted to win these Pop-Tarts. I thought that was really funny. So I got some for another group. Um, so that is the first group that I did, Coping Skills Bingo. Super easy to do. You just print one from the internet. Get it. You can do it with adults. You can do it for different populations. Um, but it's a way to really get them some concrete and practical skills. And then they have a take home that they can take with them. So, and then in my DBT group, we started working on non-judgmental practice. And this is one of my favorite things to do is to talk about judgments and being non-judgmental. It really sparks a lot of amazing discussion. So we watched a clip, if you go on YouTube and you, you search for Dove commercials, there's so many amazing ones that can come up that spark a lot of discussion around self-talk and criticism and self-compassion and non-judgmentalness. So we watched one of those groups tonight. I mean, one of those, um, videos tonight and then thank you for the, the thumbs up and then what we did was we played a game called observation or judgment and so I had everyone write down five words to describe either themselves or someone else so what I like to do is before I ask them to look at themselves I usually ask them to look at someone else because it makes it less personal and less threatening so they would write down like some of them wrote down pretty funny annoying and then I had the group vote observation or judgment. I also had these two marble jars and every time it was a judgment we put a marble in the, in the other jar. So it was a way for them to start tracking judgments and I let them know from this group on we're going to be tracking judgments in that way and it's kind of like a kind way for them to acknowledge if someone else is making a judgment or if they're making a self-judgment. It's a way to bring more mindfulness and awareness to it without having to accuse someone of being judgmental. Um, so I made up this little sheet observation or judgment, write down five words you use to describe yourself. I have another one that says, or used to describe someone else and put one in each of the spaces below. And I have it set up like this because sometimes I'll have them just read them off. In other groups, I'll have them cut them up and then we put them in a jar and then we pick them out. So I do it in all different ways, depending on the group and depending on the time we have in the group. But it's a really great way to start to think about what is a judgment, what's just an observation, what's a descriptive word. Um, and it sparked a lot of great discussion tonight. So if you want this paper, it's, you know, if you could see it, I'm happy to share it with you. Just comment below that you want it and I'll send it right over to you. That is what I have for you tonight. So coping skills, bingo, observation or judgment. There's a lot of great videos on YouTube if you search Dove commercials. Um, love the idea of a judgment jar and being like kind when people are making judgments and a way of helping them acknowledge it without being accusatory. So hope this was helpful for you. Just a reminder, one space left in Become a Group Guru and CART closes tomorrow at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I look forward to seeing those of you who are in the course in the course and seeing one more of you in the course and continuing to support the rest of you here in our amazing group. Have a great night. Bye.